You've probably heard the term HDR, and if you're shopping for a new TV or monitor, you'll be told that it's the next big technology, and you'll find that it's marketed as the best thing since sliced bread. But is it? It's actually a harder question to answer than you might expect. So here's everything you need to know before buying. HDR is a term that stands for High Dynamic Range. And in a nutshell, it allows for a greater amount of color and contrast on your screen at the same time. Whenever a camera captures an image, you're just looking at a snapshot of that particular moment in time. And the higher quality of camera, the more light information can be packed into a single frame. It gives us a huge layering of different detail across different levels of light, so we can see into both the dark shadows and the bright highlights of any particular scene. If we're watching a film, then this is normally recorded as quite a flat, murky looking image, before they hand all of that footage over to a colorist, where they edit it and then bring back all of the detail, and of course tailor the film to meet the creative style of the director. This in itself is fantastic, and I can pretty much guarantee that if you see anything that's filmed in this way, you will describe it as cinematic. And in terms of video production, this is how we increase the dynamic range of the scene. But this is actually only half the story, as while having a great source is essential, we still need to deliver and display that content on a projector, monitor or TV. And due to limitations with both screen quality and delivery bandwidth, the amount of dynamic range that we can show on our screens has been limited. Until now. Thanks to innovations with both LCD and OLED displays, the hardware inside your screen is now capable of showing more colour information and a wider range of brightness on the display at the same time. This allows the image to look more vibrant and contrasty, but also a lot more natural, with darks and lights both reflecting reality closer than ever, assuming that's what the director intended. Because of this, we also have new standards for capturing and delivering video with HDR. If you're a producer, then you're probably already making a switch to the Rec 2020 color space, but if you're consuming the media, then you're looking for a screen that supports the HDR10 standard. HDR10 allows your TV to receive and display high dynamic range images with a wider array of color, and it's supported by pretty much any HDR screen that's worth its salt. This is the current baseline for HDR displays, but because nothing is ever simple, there are even more advanced options out there if you want the absolute highest quality HDR experience. On the TV side of things, you may hear the term HDR+, or Dolby Vision. And both of these are more advanced HDR formats, and they can change the video metadata during playback. In layman's terms, this means that the content can tell the screen exactly how bright and how dark each scene should be, and allow for even clearer detail. But unfortunately, not all of these formats are supported by every manufacturer and model, and the amount of available video is, well, rather limited. In terms of normal HDR10 content though, this has been around for quite a few years now, it's matured a lot, and there is actually quite a lot out there. Pretty much every new game that arrives on Xbox and PlayStation will support HDR, and even the PC has support in the majority of the freshly released AAA titles. Netflix and Prime Video also have a huge library of video content, with seemingly every new original release arriving in both 4K and HDR, some of which even use the advanced dynamic formats. And let's not forget about 4K Blu-ray, which offers the highest quality picture right now, and a huge amount of discs that are available with a full fat Dolby Vision experience. So the ecosystem is pretty well established right now, but the question remains, is any of this actually worth it? And the answer is, well, sort of. The main issue with HDR is that the whole thing just isn't very simple. Unlike 4K resolution, which is binary, you either have it or you don't, HDR varies from jaw-droppingly amazing to just a bit pants. For the best experience, you're going to need some well-mastered content and a high-end display that's capable of showing a wide range of colors, deep inky blacks, and bright, bold highlights. And this just isn't the easiest thing to get hold of, as there's a huge range and variance between all the different displays, and this is really the underlying issue. Whenever you're shopping for an HDR display, look for three key things. The first is how bright the image can get, and this is normally listed as peak brightness. In my opinion, you're looking for something that goes over 600 nits, but for the best experience, you're going to need to find something that nears 1000. The second thing to see if you can spot is how dark the display can get, 
but this is normally a bit trickier as it's not always advertised. Instead, pay attention to whether there is a backlight dimming system, as this is normally a good indicator of a great display, as the screen can turn off the backlight whenever it's showing dim images. If you do want to take HDR seriously though, you're going to want to find something that has what's called a zone dimming system, as this can turn off different areas of the screen to give you bright areas and bright bits, but then also really dark bits in dark areas. The alternative is to get an OLED TV, as this doesn't actually have a backlight system at all, and you get perfect blacks without having to worry about any of the issues associated with LCD, but they don't go as bright because complicated. The final thing you need to look at is the standard of HDR that's supported. And it's worth getting something with HDR 10 plus or Dolby Vision. Despite the lack of content, it is the highest degree of HDR processing and it will become more useful over time. Unfortunately, this tech hasn't really made it to PC monitors yet, but there is a clear system you can use to make sure you're getting a good model. It's called the Visa Display HDR Standard and it's designed to make buying a high dynamic range monitor very simple and very painless. There are actually quite a lot of pretty crap HDR displays out there, but if you grab a monitor that has this badge, then it will meet all of the requirements to give you a great experience. So there you go, hopefully everything you need to know about HDR. Very complicated I know, but I guess once you peel back all the layers, it's sort of simple to understand, you just need a good source, you need a medium that can actually transport it, and then you need a TV that can display it. You have all of those three things, and you have a fantastic HDR experience that is absolutely worth it. You just gotta make sure that you get the best display you can, and you don't get fobbed off with one of these, especially on the monitor side, one of these displays that says HDR, but it won't really look any different to your eyes. If this video has helped you, please hit the like button. It really helps me out. It lets YouTube and other people, I guess, know that this is a video worth watching. This took a bit of time to make and write, so I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Subscribe for more videos just like this, and do let me know what sort of topics you want me to cover next. If you do want to see some reviews of PC monitors with HDR support, you can find that in the top right hand corner. But I am severely out of breath now. It's time to go and chill for a bit, I think. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.